thank you very much. And uh, thank you for inviting me to speak about a topic which is really close to my heart, and that, of course, is steward ownership. Steward ownership is a governance model with profound influence in Denmark. It emerged in the 20th century, paving the way for some of Denmark's biggest and most important companies today. And it is still going strong in today's global economy, and in my opinion, more relevant than ever. My history with steward ownership goes back many years. I started my career as a young shipping trainee in the global shipping company Maersk, and this was where I spent the first many, many years of my professional life. Maersk was then and is today a company which embraces the idea of steward ownership. It was founded and led by a visionary business entrepreneur who made the decision to transfer a controlling part of the company to a foundation. This decision started a new ownership structure, an ownership shared between a family and a commercial foundation. And this became a defining element in the company culture and a stable platform for the company's continued growth and development. And it made me personally a very big fan of the model. Today, I'm CEO of the Lundbeck Foundation, one of Denmark's largest commercial foundations. I have thus become a steward myself, and I have taken over the ownership responsibility from our visionary founder, Grete Lundbeck, who established the foundation back in 1954. My CEO responsibility is, together with our supervisory board, to be the best possible owner of Lundbeck, a global pharmaceutical company specialized in the treatment of brain diseases, and in parallel, also to be a good partner to society around us. This is a role that I take very seriously. In Denmark, we use the term commercial foundations to describe a well-established model of steward ownership. When we talk about our commercial foundations, or some may call them enterprise foundations, we talk about a role with three key responsibilities. So commercial foundations in Denmark are independent and self-governing organizations with no shareholders. They are subject to a special set of legislation and governed by a set of statutes which are guidelines developed by the founder and very difficult to change. They are also led by an independent board who identify and select new members through their own processes. Commercial foundations are also business owners who operate with a long-term perspective and no active exit plans. The stewards, in our case, my team, me, together with our board, are committed to do what's best for the company. This means that we are investors looking to maximize financial value creation. This is actually very important to us. However, although we feel every day the market pressures, we are not driven by any short-term concerns, and we have the freedom to work with a long-term perspective and with a broader notion of value creation than what we usually see in the market. Commercial foundations in Denmark are also philanthropic partners to society as a whole. Commercial foundations get a tax reduction in exchange for profit sharing with society through philanthropic grants. As a result, commercial foundations finance many activities in the local society 
and this role has grown in recent years. Scientific research at universities, cultural events, social programs in civil society, support to NGOs and other important contributors. In the early days, these grants were limited, but they have increased as the steward-owned companies have grown their profits. This has driven an increasing role and influence for the commercial foundations who are embracing the opportunity to drive mission and purpose further. Our topic today is the beauty of steward ownership. It's a topic that, if I'm not stopped, I can talk about for hours. But since I only have 15 minutes today, I will limit myself to sharing four perspectives from different stakeholders who all have an, have an important stake in the model. And those are founders, society, investors, and employees. And let me start with the founders who were the pioneers and voluntarily transferred all or most of their shares to a foundation led by a board with independent board members. What made them do this? And what did they actually want to achieve? Overall, not two cases are similar, but taken together, three main reasons stand out for why the business founders in the aftermath of World War II decided to transfer their company ownership to an independent foundation. Firstly, founders were ambitious and visionary business entrepreneurs, just like you guys, who saw opportunities and had big dreams for their companies. Many saw uncertainties in the aftermath of World War II and wanted to safeguard their companies against external takeover and financial speculation, and perhaps the risk of a future conflict inside the family. Placing the company in the hands of an independent foundation led by professional and competent board who were guided by a clear set of statutes which outlined ownership objectives and values was seen as, as an effective bulwark against takeover attempts. Founders were also business leaders with a strong sense of purpose and values. Some were on a mission to drive social change and wanted to maintain this mission over time and after their death. For example, the global pharmaceutical company Novo Nordisk was pioneered by two brothers who were passionate about science and about new medical discoveries. The brothers established their first foundation right from the company outset in 1926 and committed to using company profit to support science and medical research. This set the direction for the present day's involvement where the Novo Nordisk Foundation is the world's biggest philanthropic grant giver and investor in biomedical science. Finally, founders were people leaders wondering about succession and wondering about next generation leaders. Some founders had children, but not always with the right mix of competences and motivation. Other founders lacked a successor and many could see a way forward in the steward ownership model. This was certainly the case with the Lundbeck Foundation. Grete Lundbeck was the first employee in Lundbeck when the company was created in 1915. And she later married the founder and inherited the company when he passed away. Grete didn't have any children, but she had a passion for business and for science and she established the Lundbeck Foundation in 1954 with a set of statutes requiring us, the stewards of today, to be the best possible owners of the company and to support medical scientific research. So, in many ways, steward ownership became the answer to many fundamental founder 
questions. It was a way to secure a future for the company long term and simultaneously solve fundamental questions and challenges related to purpose, to culture, succession and family inheritance. Let's move to another important stakeholder, society. What's in it for them? What does the public and government think about steward ownership and what does society get out of it? Overall, I think it's fair to say that most people do not spend a lot of time thinking about governance models and company ownership. It's not really a topic that's top of mind with the general public, nor with politicians. And commercial foundations have, for a very long time, pursued a quiet existence in Denmark. However, this is changing as steward-owned companies have grown and foundations have increased their philanthropic grants. Hence, public interest and expectations are growing, and so is the voice of some foundations. Today, we see a stable and positive sentiment around the commercial foundations. We regularly ask our stakeholders and make surveys in the public, and few people oppose the idea of commercial foundations. And this covers actually all parts of the political spectrum. This is due to the fact that society gets a lot in return from the model. The societal benefits have two dimensions. First, there's the business side. Steward-owned companies are actually few in numbers, covering only around 1% of Danish companies. But some of them have grown to become highly successful and are today among Denmark's largest and most well-known companies. Most well-known companies are also listed on the stock exchange. And steward-owned companies cover 70% of the Danish market cap. 70%. The model is particularly strong in Denmark's two key industries, shipping and life science which includes some of the most important steward-owned companies in Denmark. And secondly, there's the philanthropic side. We have in Denmark close to 10,000 foundations, of which approximately 14% are commercial foundations. And the largest foundations have grown their philanthropic grants significantly. These grants go to the areas of public interest and importance. They go to science, they go to culture, the social areas, education, nature, environment, and I could go on and on and on. Today, Denmark's scientific community would actually be in great trouble without the commercial foundations who complement the public budgets with considerable funding. Let's move to the third perspective, the investor. What are the virtues of steward ownership from an investment point of view? And why would you invest in a steward-owned company? Again, steward-owned companies have a number of positive traits which are important to the investment community today, and I hope even more so in the future. Firstly, steward-owned companies are more innovative than other companies in the sense that they apply for more patents than comp companies with other ownership structures. And as you know, innovation is the key for any company's development and value creation. We also know that innovation takes time, especially in some industries such as the life science industry. And this makes the long-term ownership perspective in the steward ownership model highly important. Not surprisingly, steward ownership has been particularly important for Denmark's life science sector. 77% of turnover in the Danish life science is generated by steward-owned companies, which also employ 60% of Denmark's life science employees. 
Secondly, steward-owned companies are also more resilient in the sense that their survival rate is higher than companies with other ownership models. And again, this should not come as a surprise when you think about it, because commercial foundations own their companies with a long-term perspective and often have a financial strength which can support the company's development. Thirdly, we recently conducted a comparative study and discovered that steward-owned companies perform better on key sustainability indicators such as governance, diversity, employee engagement, etc. For example, governance is a key consideration for commercial foundation and so is board diversity in terms of sector and gender. Finally, and this should not be forgotten, how about financial value creation? This topic has been studied in many times in close detail, and the conclusion is clear. Steward-owned companies deliver the same level as financial profitability as businesses with other ownership structures. And in my opinion, that point is actually very, very important. Some investors could argue that the long-term perspective may undermine the healthy focus on financial value creation. In response to this, we need to point out the flexibility of the steward ownership model. It's a model which can keep, be combined with other ownership models. It could be family ownership, public trading, and private equity. And all of these combination models uh, are actually present today. My personal opinion is that steward ownership and public trading actually go very well hand in hand. It gives you the best of two worlds, short and long term, and there are many companies which are good examples of this. Taken together, the traits make steward owned companies an interesting and stable quality investment over time, but probably not an investment which is super fit for short-term speculative objectives. And this brings me to the fourth and final perspective on, on steward ownership, the employees. In many ways, the steward ownership model captures the founder's purpose and values. This was certainly the case in my early career at Maersk, where the combined model of family and steward ownership drove purpose and engagement inside the company. It's also the case at our company, Lundbeck, where foundation ownership and our focus on brain research and neuroscience can open international doors and is a key part of the company culture. Steward ownership was actually a motivational factor for me as a young employee and probably also for many of my colleagues. And it's part of the storytelling that companies use today with new employees and partners and companies that they acquire. We've also learned from research that some cultural elements stand out more strongly in steward-owned companies than in other companies. Employee diversity is one talent development, and employee engagement and retention, and also compensation parity. According to research, employees in steward-owned companies tend to be more diverse and feel more engaged by leadership and employer. They also stay longer in their companies, and the gender pay gap is generally smaller than seen in other companies. These elements may not have been top of mind for business leaders 20 years ago, but they are today. And I see an important, strong employer branding potential for steward-owned companies with respect to talent, attraction, and retention. We are a global economy, and the war for talent is today more important than it has ever been. So, where does all this beauty leave the steward ownership model in the world economy today? As I hope you can tell, 
I'm a big fan of the model and believe it has proven its worth during the past century in Denmark. It's flexible and easy to combine, combine with other ownership structures. It has driven financial value creation, but also purpose and value in a much broader sense of the word, supporting industries and science, new discoveries and important sustainability priorities and a stronger people agenda. In many ways, the steward ownership model captures what I like to think of as capitalism with a social consciousness. It combines the best of different worlds and puts value creation in a broader and a new context. I therefore believe that steward ownership has a lot to offer to Europe and to the global economy. My vision is that the steward ownership model can pave the way for a more innovative Europe in the global economy, a greener and healthier continent and planet, a more sustainable lifestyle and happy employees who will live longer and work much longer in future generations. All these elements are important for our future and therefore worth to explore further. I am really excited to be here today and look forward to learning more about what will come out of your discussions and thoughts through the next few days. So with that, I really want to thank you, Armin, and the rest of you for driving this the way you are driving it. Thank you very, very much for that. And thank you so much for your attention. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lina. Um, we do have uh, the time for maybe one or two very short questions. <laughs> uh, so who wants to go first? Uh, there's someone right there. Thank you. I'll keep it really brief. How does no shareholders, if I understood that correctly, uh, combine with being listed on the stock market? There are, there are shareholders. Of course, you can't be listed on the stock market if you don't have shareholders. What most, comp or what most founders will do, and that's what we see today, is that they will put part of the company, a controlling part of the company, into a foundation. And then the rest, you know, some will own it themselves and other, others will have it on the stock exchange. And that's actually what has happened, is that you have uh, companies where the controlling interest is with the foundation and the steward ownership, but then you have a large part of it that is quoted and therefore traded in a day-to-day -day market. Thank you. Uh, do we have another quick question? There's one more. Hello, thank you for your wonderful presentation. Thank you. Um, you highlighted some great figures about diversity, yes. result of steward ownership. Yeah. I was wondering how how does steward ownership create greater diversity in an organization? That's a really good question. I'm not sure I know the answer, but I think what, what we actually did was that we did an analysis uh, or got someone to do an analysis for us to figure out what are the traits that are really important. And you then ask this, this question. I think it needs to come by, be combined with one of the key outcomes is that employees feel a greater engagement they stay longer, they feel they are taken care of in a way to a larger extent that they do in many other ownership forms. And I think that could be part of what's creating it, but it's really difficult to know exactly what it is. Uh, gender pay parity may also be part of it. Awesome. Thank you so much, Lena. Actually, the diversity uh, topic is something that we have a workshop on uh, tomorrow. So Great. I think it's Thank super you so exciting. much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.